Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending when you are either listening to this podcast episode or watching this video. My name is Rafael Vasquez, and this is your show, Líderes del Futuro. Um, and today I have the privilege and opportunity to have a conversation with Dr. Maur Mayra Lara, who is the Associate Director of Educator Engagement at the Education mm -hmm. Trust West. Uh, thank you first for accepting the invitation to be with me today. Thank you, Rafael. Really appreciate the, the invitation. I'm very happy to speak with you and um, to everybody watching. Definitely. So one of the things that I think uh, happens when there are elections is you start getting a lot of information. As a voter, you get mm -hmm. information from one mm -hmm. side, you get information from another side. There's a certain level of manipulation from time to time, uh, whether it is from individuals who want to get elected, uh, people who are trying to uh, pass a proposition, all of this stuff. Um, and the reason I wanted you to dialogue with us today is because I want some clarification about Prop mm -hmm. 16. There is a lot of mm -hmm. misinformation that is going out there. I'm mm -hmm. hearing from students at Santa Rosa Junior College. I'm hearing from students in Berkeley, uh, UC David, mm -hmm. UCLA, and mm -hmm. the confusion can go both ways, but you know, so, oh, I, I'm thinking about voting for this, I'm thinking about voting for that. Mm -hmm. And what I'm seeking is clarification as to what is Proposition 16, if you could do that for us. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, we'll take it from there as to what some of the argument on behalf of the opposition is, but if you could just break mm -hmm. it down for us. Yeah, absolutely. And you're absolutely right. There is a lot of misinformation about what Prop 16 is. Um, and, and it's important to, it's really important to clarify. So what Proposition 6 would do is that it would reinstate affirmative action in the state of California. And it's important to remember that affirmative action programs are designed to increase access to employment, to educational opportunities, and it, it's created or it's set up to increase access to, to employment and education opportunities for folks who have been systematically disadvantaged and or uh, underrepresented populations. And this includes people of color, this includes um, women, and it really is set up to ensure equitable um, opportunity in our public educational systems and in our workforce. And this is important. Uh, people in California, right? Uh, eventually in Arizona, mm -hmm. we had many anti-immigrant laws. In Georgia, we mm -hmm. had anti-immigrant laws. In Alabama, we had mm -hmm. anti-immigrant laws. But mm -hmm. people say, oh, California is so progressive. And in reality, we are lying to ourselves. Uh, California was the one that started mm -hmm. with Prop 187. And then eventually mm -hmm. we moved on to Prop 209. And the mm -hmm. argument was, again, from the opposition and continues to be, we need to treat everybody equally. Um, mm -hmm. But what does that really mean, right? Like equal mm -hmm. and equity are completely different. Uh, and I went mm -hmm. and looked at their website and it's about equal rights, but it's not about equitable rights. Can you tell us why, again, mm -hmm. um, their argument is wrong? Yeah, absolutely. So just to go back to what you said earlier, um, Prop 209 was really, and it's what um, initiated, and it's what removed affirmative action in the state of California, right? And it was a series of California uh, voter ballot measures in the 90s that was really motivated by race and xenophobia. So like you mentioned, um, Prop 187, it intended to make folks who are immigrants, undocumented folks, ineligible for public benefits. But in 1997, that was reversed and a federal judge declared it unconstitutional. Similarly, Prop 227 in, in 1998 made it so that English was only was the only language in public schools, right? It was the English only in public schools initiative. But in 2006, through Proposition 58, it made so that other languages were allowed in public education, including Spanish, for example. Um, Prop 209 is one of the only ones left from that series 
um, that that should be right, um, that should be reversed in order to ensure that we have, like you said, equitable access. And and it was it was passed under the disguise of equality. But what we know that happened is that it created more inequities across the state, right? It created so that women were no longer being um, um, equitably represented in, in different programs. Um, this includes in jobs. Um, this includes in, in government contracts, for example, women-owned businesses. And so what, what Prop 16 would do is that it would repeal the ban on affirmative action to ensure that we all have equitable access. Because even though it was disguised as of equality, the result of that was not equality. The result of that was that folks of color, um, Black folks, Latinx folks, Pacific Islanders, Native folks, um, uh, Asian folks, we were not equal. Um, it created more disparities. And so uh, Prop 16 would really be the, um, the, the path for, for equity. It would be the path to get us to that equality that we see. Definitely. And so again, going back, because now we have a lot of individuals who are just now 18, 19, 20, 21. Mm -hmm. So they don't know the historical pieces about 187 and 227 and 209. And that's why I, I to a certain degree, I think it's important that we talk about those pieces, that we revisit that mm -hmm. piece. Um, a lot of it was this uh, xenophobia about uh, mm -hmm. people of color uh, increasing in numbers mm -hmm. in California, Latinx becoming the largest ethnic group mm -hmm. and that fear mm -hmm. um, of those elected officials who wanted to uh, maintain mm -hmm. power because of their fear that they kept spreading, which now we are seeing to a certain mm -hmm. degree at a national level, the fear that mm -hmm. once uh, whites become the minority, quote unquote, that they are gonna suffer reverse uh, discrimination, all this stuff. Mm -hmm. And what we have seen in California is that has never happened, right? Mm -hmm. What we mm -hmm. have seen is people of color are still not having enough access. Uh, several mm -hmm. community colleges, I know for sure at Santa Rosa Junior College in Northern California, um, the number of people of color that attend that college versus the number mm -hmm. of faculty of color that, that teach full-time at that college is not representative. And I think that, again, mm -hmm. it requires laws as this one's uh, to be able to create that equity, to be able to create mm -hmm. um, true access to education, employment, mm -hmm. uh, and contracting, which is essential. Uh, is there anything mm -hmm. else that we really need to understand about Prop 16? Mm -hmm. Well, when we think about um, uh, education, since, since you brought up education also, it's not only um, just the students who are enrolled, for example, um, in, our, in our university systems, um, but it's also what programs they have access to, right? So for example, um, we know that, that um, currently there couldn't be uh, targeted resources to meet students' needs at post-secondary institutions, so universities. Right, and so with with Prop 16, they could implement practices. We could implement programs and policies to close those graduation gaps that exist, and and bolster, increase the academic successes of all students attending California's public university systems. So it's not just about the enrollment piece, right? About the number of students who are enrolled, but it's also about what are we doing when when students of color, for example are enrolled in our university systems. And this includes the community colleges. This includes California State Universities and the University of California systems. What are we doing to support students once they are in our institutions? And Prop 16 would allow for those opportunities for students to receive those targeted supports. Um, and it's not just at the at the university level. When we think about when we think about the K-12 level, we also have to think about the targeted resources to meet those students' needs, right? In our educational systems, in our public schools across K-12, in order to ensure that Black students, Latinx students, Pacific Islanders, Native students get the resources that we need, Prop 16 would allow for those targeted resources, would allow for equitable funding in the K-12 system. And when we think about K-12 systems also in, in education, we also think, have to think about the, the teaching workforce. 
right? Across the state of California, um, we have um, uh, a large number of, of students of color who, who are in our public, um, our public school systems. However, um, the percentage of educators of color doesn't have parity, it doesn't match. Um, so we have, for example, 77% um, of students in California are students of color, but only 35% of teachers are teachers of color. Um, and we know that when students of color have teachers of color, it increases um, their academic opportunities in a variety of ways. So Prop 16 would also allow it so that there is a larger number of, of teachers of color across the state. And we can see our students thrive in our educational systems. And ultimately, that's what we should want to see. We should want to see our K-12 students thrive. We should want to see our our um, students in the, in the public university systems thrive because that allows for a pipeline. If we're all thriving in our educational system, then we get to also thrive when we get into the workforce. Um, and that's what Prop 16 is set up to do, ensuring that we're all thriving in education, in the workforce, in the um, government contracts that are, that are allowed and given to women and to people of color who are business owners. That's what Prop 16 will do. Definitely, and again, it's about the workforce, as you mentioned. And there has been um, multiple pieces of research in California that said by 2025, we are looking at a 1.6 million worker shortage for careers that require two years of college or more. Mm -hmm. um, and, and a lot of it has to do with this. We have people of color that make it to a junior high school and make it to high school. And how many of them actually graduate? How many of them go to the community college? And the numbers are really, really horrible when we really are honest with ourselves. And the one that is going to suffer is the state of California, the economy of the state of California, because either we are going to have to continue to pay more funding for some type of welfare services for those who don't graduate, who end up with jobs that don't allow them to get um, health insurance and all these other services, but they are not contributing a lot of money to the economy through the tax system as a result of this. And so I am glad that Prop 16 is on the ballot. I am hopeful that mm -hmm. people will honestly look into it. I'm grateful that students are reaching out and saying, why is there so much confusion about this proposition? Mm -hmm. um, in what's mm -hmm. the direction? So I'm hoping that this conversation that you and I are having will help those students clarify the confusion and then they can make mm -hmm. the right decision in regard to mm -hmm. this. And so um, mm -hmm. with that, I don't wanna take a lot of your time. I wanna make sure that we put the information out there as quickly as possible. And I wanna thank you, uh, Dr. Mayra Lara, for taking the time and being with me today here on Líderes del Futuro. And I look forward to another future conversation on many of the other topics that your organization covers on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me. It's been a pleasure. Thank you.